Hello everybody, welcome to another edition of The Purple Book, and we are in chapter 3, which is about repentance and baptism. Acts chapter 2, verse 38 says, And Peter said to them, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the forgiveness of your sins, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. Did you guys know that repentance is one of the gateways of the Holy Spirit into your life? It is a very necessary thing. Acts 3.19 says this, Repent therefore and turn back. Turn back to what? Turn back to Christ, that your sins may be blotted out. Guys, repentance is more than just being sorry for your sins. Repentance means you turn back to Christ. You make a U-turn from that area. Now, uh, at this point, everyone, before going into this lesson, is supposed to read Luke chapter 15, verses 11 to 24. I recommend that you pause and do that right now. And once you've done that, we'll keep going. One of the most gripping stories in the Bible concerning a relationship crisis between a father and son. Jesus told this story of a son who took his inheritance and went away and squandered it with reckless living. Somebody say the prodigal son. He ended up losing everything and living in despair. The Bible says he eventually came to himself and determined to get up and return to his father. This is a picture of what is meant by repentance. In essence, being truly sorry for our sins and desperate to restore our relationship with God, our Heavenly Father. That is the introduction to chapter 3. And lesson 1 is this. It's entitled, What Shall We Do? Number 1. What did the prodigal son say to his father? And in Luke chapter 15, verse 21, it says that he said, I have sinned against heaven and you. I'm no longer worthy to be called your son. He had true remorse, all right? So that's what the prodigal son said to his father. Number two, what was the response of the father? And in Luke 15, verses 22 through 24, we, we are shown that the father welcomed him and celebrated his return. And I want you guys to know that's what God, our father, does when we return to him, when we come to our senses and when we, when we come with a repentant attitude. Number three, what did Jesus say causes heaven to celebrate? And we find in Luke 15, 7, that when even one sinner repents, okay, uh, 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 heaven rejoices, all right? Heaven rejoices more over the one who repents than the 99 who didn't need to repent, all right? That's an amazing thing. Now, guys, repentance produces a real change in our hearts, and is the fruit of God's grace truly working in our lives. You can't even repent without God's grace. Amen. But God's grace works in our lives. We cooperate with his grace and we respond to his grace and then we repent. Now, uh, it's good to pause right here and read Acts chapter 2 verses 36 to 46. All right, once you've done that, once we start again, we move on to number four. Who did Peter declare Jesus to be? And Acts 2.36 says, Lord and Christ. In other words, he's my boss and he's my savior, okay? He's Lord and Christ. He is the Messiah. He's my savior, but he's also the one that I obey. Number five, what did the people say in response to Peter's preaching? And in Acts 2.37, they said, what shall we do? What shall we do? You know that you've preached a good sermon. If at the end people say, wow, I need to do something, what should I do? <laughs> what should I do to come into alignment with God's word? Number six, what did Peter say that they should do? And in Acts 2.38, uh, he says, repent and be baptized for the forgiveness of sins. Some versions say for the remission of sins. Of sins, okay? So we repent and are baptized for the forgiveness of sins because there is no salvation without forgiveness of sins. There is no forgiveness of sins without repentance, okay? This is a really important point. Number seven, what did Peter say they would receive if they would repent and be baptized? Verse uh, chapter 2, verse 38 says, is the same verse as the last question, they would receive the Holy Spirit. Amen. And the Holy Spirit is received by every true believer. But we want even more than that. We also want the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Can I get a good amen on that? Amen. All right. Now, uh, number 8 asks this question, who did this promise apply to? 
And Acts 2.39 says this, it applies to you, it applies to your children, and it applies to people who are far off, people who are far away. In other words, it applies to a lot of people. It really applies to everyone because uh, God desires that all men be saved, all right? So you, your children, and people who are far off. Number nine, what else did Peter say? Acts 2.40 says, save yourselves from this crooked generation. Notice he didn't say save yourselves from the devil. He said, save yourselves from this crooked generation. Guys, uh, friendship with the world is enmity with Christ. Okay, that means you make yourself an enemy with God. Okay, so we have to be careful that we don't get crooked like the world is trying to make us to be because they're crooked too. Okay, we need to save ourselves from what? From this generation. All right. Now, uh, ver uh, number 10 asks this question. What happened to those who received his word? And Acts 2.41 says they were baptized. And by the way, it wasn't a baptism of like six or seven or eight. It was a baptism of 3,000. Okay, 3,000 people were baptized. Number 11. Once they were added to the local body of believers, what did they do? And Acts 2 verses 42 to 46 says this. They devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching, to fellowship, to the breaking of bread. Isn't that good news that food is included in that? To prayers and to shared possessions. What does that mean? They helped one another out. Whenever somebody was in need, they helped one another out. So guys, once they were added to the, the fellowship of the believers, they started to function as the body of Christ. They were devoted to teaching to fellowship, what is that, hanging out together, to breaking of bread, eating together, to, to praying together, and to shared possessions. Peter preached the message of the cross, that Jesus is both Lord and Christ. The result was the people were cut to the heart. They responded by asking, what shall we do? The answer to their question was fourfold. Four things that they were told to do. Repent, be baptized, receive the gift of the Holy Spirit, and be added to the church, the community of believers. In this chapter, we will study repentance and water baptism. The Holy Spirit and the church will be covered in separate chapters. Okay. Now, the application reflection question is this. What did you learn from this lesson, and how will you apply it to your life? And this is my answer to that question. You should write your own. I wonder why we humans don't get as excited about the one sinner being saved as heaven does. We really should be. We really should be. The more that we become like Christ, the more that we allow God's word to become a part of our lives, the more excited we get about the things that excite heaven. I love you guys. God bless you. Uh, once again, feel free to contact me, email me. And I love to give word-based advice, and I love to, to talk uh, with people who have questions about the kingdom of God.